Hey guys, welcome to Sandvolt Tutorials. In this video today we're going to be taking a look at a real basic sort of studio tip and trick that you can do in Logic Pro X when it comes to your mix down and sort of mastering process. So yeah, I've been working on this track today. I've got to a point where I'm happy with, with all my mix down. I've got all my faders sort of set at the levels that I sort of want. I've got my mix, everything sitting sort of nicely. So yeah, but then I've neglected the main output. And if you see... I'm hitting the reds and no one wants that so you could go back to your main mixer and you can just sort of drag across the bottom here and select all of your outputs and sort of reduce them down in volume I mean that's great it's one way to do it but I find a lot of the time you end up sort of losing the sort of sound of the mix that you've worked so hard to get and yeah, you end up sort of losing that original sort of sound and you end up having to go through and redo it and compensate for, for reducing all those channels down at the same time. Um, the other other reason being is I've got sort of audio outputs and sort of buses set up and I don't necessarily want to reduce those in volume as well. So you could go through and sort of select and deselect which ones you do want to reduce, but it can just be a bit of a pain. But yeah, this is just a real quick workaround to do that. So on your main master output, there's a great little plugin called Gain. What this is doing, if you reduce the gain on there, it's reducing the signal, the gain of the signal that's being sent into this main master output. So you can see there now where I've reduced the gain, I'm not hitting in the reds anymore. Um, what I would tend to do after this is go in and put a limiter on there. So what limiter is doing is basically it's going to stop any audio levels um, going past zero decibels on your main master output. So that's great, it's a real sort of safeguard to stop any sort of clipping or things like that. But um, to, one one thing to be careful of is you don't want to push it too far, so you don't want to increase your gain too much because it's not only cutting off the sort of frequencies or waveforms above zero dB, but it's also increasing the troughs of your waveform as well. So that gap, the distance between your peaks and your troughs are gradually, gradually being decreased. So you end up with um, hardly any dynamics in your mix and stuff like that. So yeah, I'm just using this as a, a sort of safeguard really. I wouldn't really push it too far. I would leave the mastering to sort of the professionals in the mastering houses with all the hardware and things. But yeah, that's just a great way to make sure that your tracks are pre-master ready. So what I would then do, just to double check I've got the sort of right levels and stuff, is just put a meter on there, a level meter. And what this will do is it'll basically give you a a level a level meter of your main output so if you have it on last in your sort of chain of effects there you know that's that's the level that's going to be bounced to so yeah mastering houses would use your request sort of minus six to sort of minus eight decibels so what i would then do is just sort of listen to the track and increase or decrease the gain until i'm achieving sort of around between minus six and minus eight db and that way you're allowing the mastering house enough headroom to uh, do what they need to do. So yeah, thanks for watching. Um, if you found this tutorial helpful, please do subscribe. Also, if you wanted to head over to soundvault.co.uk, we've got loads of free preset packs, free music downloads and bits and pieces like that on there as well. So yeah, thanks again. We'll see you next time.